So, I consider the system, this is my active medium, this is where I am injecting, let us say this is the current density or current. Uh, how do you j relate j to uh, i? i by a uh, area is your j and area is w into l and d is the thickness and you also should know that the mirror is here. In case of a semiconductor laser in a Fabry Perot semiconductor laser you just do a dielectric coating at the end faces. So, these are your mirrors, you make the laser at the edges, you put one layer after the other dielectric coating, so that itself acts as the mirror. And as far as the loss is concerned in terms of, see we want to know, we know what is the photon generated inside the system, P per unit volume is what we know. What we want to know is what comes out of the system. And we know that what comes out of the system is proportional to minus 2 alpha VGP like how we had derived earlier. Uh, 2 alpha mirror because alpha is no not because there are 2 mirrors. This we discussed last time power we are talking about power. Electric field is uh, um, the attenuation coefficient or uh, attenuation constant in field is alpha. So, when it becomes power it becomes 2 alpha. We have already considered the fact that there are two mirrors because this alpha mirror had R1, R2 and uh, 2D. So, we have already considered there in alpha mirror. This too comes not because of the fact that there are two mirrors, but because of the fact that it is power equation we are writing. So, this is the power lost as far as the cavity is concerned, but whatever is the power that is lost is what is coming out of the system. Okay. Power lost in the mirror is what is coming out of the system. So, your P out output power must be equal to photon density, this is photons per unit volume multiplied by the volume which is W into D into L multiplied by H nu so that number becomes joules, this is number of photons. So, this is P is number per volume, you multiplied with volume, so you got the number, number of photons, multiplied by energy of photon is H nu, multiplied by 2 alpha mirror Vg is the power lost in the cavity which is what is the power that is available at the output, sorry this is the energy available per second because this P is per second, number per volume number density per second, p was well is it p per second? No, p is number sorry. So, this is number per volume, 2 alpha mirror Vg is what is per second because it came as dp by dt. Okay, so, this is what is giving you that per second unit and because there is a per second this is energy and this is in per second, so that becomes power. Uh, but we shall still have to substitute this p. So, we are going to substitute this p in terms of j, j, t, h and so on. So, exercise for you find out the power in terms of injection current, this is not in terms of current. So, I need to write down p in terms of current and then substitute in this equation. So, output power is this is what we wrote down. Uh, photon density P we just said that it was tau P by Q D J minus J T H tau P R S P what we derived earlier. You just have to substitute here. So, this goes into this equation. So, tau P by Q D J minus J T H then there is a W D L it is the same sorry the font looks different, but we represent the same uh, quantities H nu 2 alpha mirror V G what have I skipped here? I have skipped tau p rsp, uh, this factor is ignored and you can you have the right to ignore this only beyond threshold.
and of course, now you can uh, very clearly see that this D cancels and J times W into length will give you the current because current density multiplied by area will give you the current. So, this becomes H nu divided by Q here J minus J T H becomes I minus I T H and then there is a 2 alpha mirror V G and I am substituting tau P. We had derived tau P yesterday the photon lifetime. It has to be inversely related to the total loss in the system. So, that is 1 over 2 by alpha cavity plus alpha mirror times V g of which this 2 V g can now get cancelled. So, you get one nice sleek expression for power output. So, this is output power. which means that the power that is available at the output of the cavity depends on this I minus I T H which means how much current am I able to inject above threshold. Okay? And if you see this relation is linear with I minus I T H because all these things are constants once you make the laser cavity. Once you have the mirror uh, reflectivities once you have the cavity decided it is h nu by q is obviously a constant. So, it is directly proportional which means that beyond threshold what we drew as a straight line I did not justify why it was a straight line now I am telling you this is a straight line because it is a linear relation. So, now you can think of calculating the slope efficiency of the system what would be slope efficiency any um, as far as you know fiber optic system is concerned you will start defining the system parameter. So, as far as a laser diode is concerned what is the relevant system parameter? If I give a certain current how much is the efficiency? How much power am I able to get out of the system? So, that is the slope efficiency of the system. Uh, we calculated it for LED we can now calculate it for a laser diode. So, what is the slope efficiency? How do you define, how should you define now the slope efficiency? P by i or d p by d i. Okay. So, slope efficiency would be simply alpha mirror divided by alpha cavity plus alpha mirror times h nu divided by dp by di which simply means that if I plot p versus i let me remind you this is again the distinguishing feature of a laser diode which uniquely differentiates it from an LED p versus i is having a threshold okay? whereas p versus i for a laser LED was a straight line passing through origin because there was only spontaneous emission. Now, what we are looking at is whether this curve is going to look like this or whether the curve is going to look like this, whether you get a large power difference for a small change in current or the power difference is going to be uh, small, uh, whether you have large efficiency or small efficiency is now decided by what now. Uh, alpha cavity is not in your control because there is a certain material you will get a certain quality of the material. So, there is a certain absorption in the material that is probably not in your control. What is you can control is the control the control the reflectivity of the mirrors. So, you can cal con control the reflectivity of the mirror to get different slope efficiency, but what is the trade off? the power. This alpha mirror remember has one more consequence. What is the other consequence of uh, alpha mirror? It is de deciding what the power is, it is also deciding something more important, thinness of the cavity, right? the full width at half maximum of the cavity. If you keep your alpha mirror high, you have high loss because of the mirror which means that you get large power at the output, 
but at the same time the full width at half maximum will start increasing. So, that is the trade off ok. So, you need to work out. So, you have you can have a multi parameter plot r 1 r 2 on one side or root of r 1 r 2 on one side full width at half maximum as one axis which is dependent on root of r 1 r 2 and on the other axis you can do slope efficiency or the power and then you can do a parametric plot and figure out to get a desired power and to get a desired spectral width what should be the combination of alphas that you should use, what should be the combination of mirrors that you could use. That is how you would design your laser system. Sometimes some lasers you do not care about the full width at half maximum, you care only about the power that is available. Whereas in some other lasers you do not care about the power, power could be low, but I need to have extremely narrow line. So, depending on your requirement you can design your laser cavity. As far as the communication goes, you have to quantify the full width at half maximum because as we said earlier you do not want that number to be very large because if that number is very large it means that you have multiple spectral components traveling in the fiber and if they are not traveling and because they are not traveling at the same speed there is a walk off and there will be a dispersion ok. So, these are your um, design parameters ok. So, we have got power at the output. Now what? Why did you want to build a laser? You wanted a laser because you wanted to have modulation, you want to have fast modulation. So, we will now get into very quickly into the business of finding out the modulation bandwidth. So, typically when you try to modulate the laser or an LED, in LED we discussed this, we said that we are going to bias the system at a specific current and about that you are going to give a modulation ok. Now, the question is in uh, LED did not matter because this curve was passing through the origin, but in laser one question matters is whether your bias should be much far away from the ith such that when you modulate it is not really going below ith or should I have my modulation such that the modulating current swings below and above my ith. Essentially saying how do I choose my bias point rather than swing I would say I would say should I choose my bias point somewhere here such that it actually goes below and above the threshold. What is the difference between the outputs under these two conditions? If we are going below the threshold the output power will go to 0 because when you are go to when you are below the threshold the output power the photon density is very very small it is corresponding to only the spontaneous emission which is negligibly small and so you will get almost close to 0 power when you are at low and when you are at high you will get a high power. So, you will get what is called as a large extinction ratio, but when you bias it slightly above the threshold it means that your extinction ratio is now decided by your slope efficiency. That is another reason why you want to calculate your slope efficiency, because if your slope efficiency is poor it means that the same delta i will give you only a small delta p. If the slope efficiency is large this delta i will actually give you a large uh, delta p ok. So, that is why the slope efficiency delta p uh, divided by delta i or dp by di is also important. So, which one would you prefer? As far as output is concerned, if you if your input current goes below the threshold, the 0 of the output is actually close to 0. Is that better or would you prefer to operate above the threshold and all the oscillations above the threshold? Below threshold is good for digital systems, 
because it is close to 0. So, intuitively you would think that you know you would it is better to go below the threshold which is fine. But the problem is every time you are going into a regime of spontaneous emission and then you are going to pick up into the regime of stimulated emission. And what are the processes that should happen when you go from a transition from spontaneous emission to stimulated emission? You should have spontaneous emission, the spontaneous emission should overcome the loss and then your 1 by tau p must be almost equal to g which means you have to reach the threshold. So, at that point the photon density will increase and then because the photon density increases the p increases uh, the rate equations come into play. So, there is some delay there. Okay. So, when you are talking about modulation bandwidth, you want to minimize all the delays in the system. So, this transition will mean there is some turn on delay. In fact, this is what happens. As your IB goes from 0 to high, the bias uh, uh, with respect to bias, the output goes from 0 to high. The photon density does this. In fact, we are not solving this, but what really happens to the photons is there is some oscillation in the photon number before it settles down. These are called as a relaxation oscillations of the system. And so, after you turned on your current to reach the steady state, it is taking this much time. So, this is called as the turn on delay. This turn on delay simply accounts for the dynamics of the fact that you are going into spontaneous emission, from spontaneous emission you are moving into stimulated emission. The fact that the photon number has to increase, it has to compensate for the loss, correspondingly the photon number changes in the system and so on. Right? So, this turn on delay to avoid this turn on delay, just to avoid this turn on delay, you would always like to operate somewhere such that the V bias is, so if this is the ith this is my power versus i or photon number versus i. The bias you would operate away from the ith such that you your, your minimum in your modulation. So, if you are modulating it as i b plus i m e power j omega t, if this is how you are modulating, your i b minus i m, the negative voltage will, the negative current will always be slightly above the threshold. So, you are not pushing the system into a regime of spontaneous emission, you are always in the regime of stimulated emission to avoid the turn on delay. 